We welcome you to our prayer meeting for this Wednesday evening. And so thankful if you're tuning in to watch with us either live or later on through the Internet. So uh, we welcome you in. Have a great crowd here in our sanctuary and looking forward to uh, see what God will uh, call us to do, inspire us to do, and empower us to do as he grows us tonight. So let's go to the Lord in prayer as we get started. Father God, thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, that your love got us up this morning. Your love kept us going through the day. Your love even brought us to this place or to this time tonight. Father, and, and everything that we do, we never exit your love. We never outrun it. We never go past it. We never lose your love. But, Father God, we thank you that your love endures. And thank you for that tonight. Because that means that not only does your love endure, but your offer of salvation endures for as long as we have breath. That we would give our, our, our whole lives over in faith in Jesus Christ to you. And, Lord God, find salvation that you offer and that only you offer in that. Lord God, I thank you for the many who are watching, the many who are here in person uh, who have done that. And Lord God, we pray that you would be growing us. And Father, if there's anyone here this evening, watching this evening, that has not put their faith in Jesus, has not been saved by the power of your spirit and through the message of your gospel, that Lord, tonight would be the night, that they wouldn't wait another second, that they wouldn't wait another, uh, another day. But Father, rather that they would give their lives to you and find salvation. Lord God, in your love, we thank you that you tell us to bring you and to, and to put before you uh, and to offer up to you the concerns of our hearts. Lord, we thank you that you, in your love for us, teach us how to love others, and part of that is to pray for one another. So, Lord God, in this time, as we lift up those who are struggling with illness and with suffering and uh, with many other things that go on in life, in life, Father, but also as we celebrate some great things, Lord God, we ask that you just guide us in our time of prayer tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, let's take a look. If you've got a uh, copy of the prayer list in front of you, let's take a look at, at that. And... Uh, you see several folks that are uh, that are in and out of the hospital. We got a few folks who have been in and out a lot, so we're remembering them. And, and sometimes between printings, they uh, they they either get out and come home or move to a different thing. And we, we're sometimes having to play catch up on that, and that's going to be true of a few here. Um, here in the hospital, some of the, the the four that are bolded that we've been uh, that have been added recently, uh, Miss Chris Price added Eason Blackwell. Uh, who's uh, was in, uh, dealing with infections, uh, an eight-year-old. How's he doing? Any, any update? Not, not, not sure. Still dealing with it. Mm. Continue to pray for East and Blackwell and, and his family. And they're from Franklin County, aren't they? Didn't you, isn't that what you told me? Um, also, uh, Grady offered up uh, the, the other three to us last week. Eleanor Main uh, with a broke arm and, and, uh, and also some toes that they were working on, just a little baby, year and a half. Um, uh, praying for Eleanor as well as uh, as uh, Mary Grace Ann, and and then of course Russell Yeager. We did get an update this week on uh, on Russell. Uh, Miss Terry uh, sent that through through Jan, and uh, let me look at that now so I share it with you correctly. Uh, but it says that uh, that he had a procedure done, and and I'm not sure you know we won't share all of that. But he had a procedure done, but had some complications afterwards, and uh, had to take him back to the ER. Uh, so, uh, so continue to pray for, for Russell and for Terry and for the rest of the family there as he recovers from this, uh, this procedure. And pray that the procedure does just what uh, it needs to do and that the Lord carries them through uh, his illness as well. Um, continue to lift up Ronnie McMillan. Um, they're, they're, he's, he's in pretty tough shape and, uh, and we want to continue to lift him up as well. Um, there under sympathy, uh, you see the family of Olivia June Weeks. Uh, Miss Carolyn uh, brought brought Miss Olivia June Weeks to us, uh, that little stillborn baby. So, bless uh, bless the family's heart there, and, and pray for them as they um, as they mourn and grieve through that. Uh, under the at home list, and, and by the way, you can uh, Jason Eichwurzel is there still on the hospital side of things, but he is at home uh, and awaiting a, another consult as they get ready to do some heart surgery for him. So uh, so he's not technically in the hospital right this second. Uh, but he'll have another stay coming up, and hopefully that'll be the only stay he has to have when they go and do that surgery for him. Um, under that home list, you've got Ashley Floyd there. Uh, that's a praise. Uh, we've been praying for her, and, and she is cancer-free, so very thankful for that, praising God for that. And then also Brad Shepard uh, that was going through some tests. Did we find anything out, Miss Helen or Miss Sandy? I, I talked to his mom last night, and all the test results were not back yet. Okay, so still awaiting test results for Brad Shepard there. 
Um, and then uh, also Ms. Carolyn told us about Mitchell Bonner who uh, is dealing with stage four cancer there underneath the cancer patients list. Um, and so praying for him and, uh, and for his family as well. Uh, I'll go ahead and add to uh, some of you have known uh, Mallory's been having some stomach issues, some abdominal issues. She's you know, many of you've been praying. We hadn't really said a whole lot about it, um, and uh, found out this morning with a kind of a I won't say emergency scope, but they bumped her up from the week of Thanksgiving to this morning. Uh, she's got a, a stomach ulcer, and uh, and so bless her heart, it's, uh, they they traced it back to some medication she was taking for a little knee injury she had. So I, it was little because it didn't happen to me, uh, but uh, but uh, but she's doing okay. She's at home this evening and, and resting from that, having that scope this morning. Uh, but she came through fine, and they they found it. They said, "Yep, this is what's going on," and uh, they're treating her for the ulcer. And hopefully, in a few months, she'll be back to normal. Uh, I, I, I told some folks in the fellowship hall last, yesterday in the JV uh, basketball game in the first quarter, she scored eight points, uh, more than she's ever scored in the whole game, and she scored in one quarter. And I said, well, whatever's wrong, maybe we don't need to fix it until after basketball season. <laughs> Nobody thought that was funny, except for those terrible people who are laughing with me right now. But anyway, uh, but we're thankful that we know we have the answers. But if you'll keep praying for her, we'd appreciate that uh, as she gets over that. Because, uh, you know. Uh, apparently not hurting as bad as the stomach, so it's it's doing better. It, she's been able to move on it, and uh, I think it's healing up. You know, when you when you try to play every sport there is at a particular school, you don't get a lot of time to heal up from one injury to move on to the next, you know, situation. So, uh, but if y'all will lift Mallory up and and, and her mama too, so. Uh, uh, she was <laughs> Sherry left out. I don't know if she's made it back yet or not. But as we were wrapping up supper, Sherry, uh, she said, I "I've been texting Mallory and she hadn't answered." Well, mamas, you know what that made you feel, right? <laughs> and, uh, and so, so she uh, she took off. Mallory was asleep and had her phone on do not disturb. Just what you want your kid to do when they're at home alone after a procedure in the morning, right? Um, and some of you are like, "Why'd you leave her at home?" We are that faithful to our church. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. Uh, we are, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> So, uh, but thank y'all for praying for her. What other, uh, what other updates and additions have you got this evening? Well, I had somebody to pray with this. Mike Biggers. Okay. He's had a major surgery in January. It's a friend of Rob's. Okay. And you spell his name for me again? B-I-G-T-E-R-S. Biggers. Okay. Okay. All right. Surgery coming up. Absolutely. Miss Sandy? Uh, correction. <clears throat> It is Grace Ann Maine. That, that, okay, when I was reading that, I was thinking that didn't sound right. Uh, Grace Ann, M A Y N E, Maine is and the. And as far as I know, Benny Bridges is back in the hospital. He, he is, he sure is. Um, and uh, and Miss Mary Ellen is actually at Wisteria, too. I was going to make that correction with. And we can take off David Wall. And I was going to add Walt Grayson as being in the hospital with pneumonia. And then Corey Calhoun that we have under cancer <clears throat> was taken to the hospital in an ambulance with a reaction to his chemo treatment. So wow. whatever they did, he put on Facebook that you know, he was talking about a call. So okay. we'll just remember him and his treatments. <clears throat> And Ms. Sandy, if you will, and actually everybody, you're obviously welcome to speak them out in here. We'll take the best notes we can uh, between me and Caleb, but I think we've got some brand new forms up here for you. So if you'll help us out, if you, whoever you mention out loud, if you'll go ahead and write those down and leave them with us tonight, that'll just really help us uh, to, to maybe, you know, spell some things right and make sure we don't mix things up. Yes, ma'am. Ooh. She's going to have to have surgery next month. Goodness. Some horseshoe screws that are Wow. So we appreciate it. And, and what's her name? Lakin Ball. Spell Lakin. L-A-K-E-N. L-A-K-E-N. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. So she's having skull surgery. Well, we'll definitely pray for her. I'm so sorry to hear that. Hope they get her fixed up. She's growing too fast, huh? That's kind of what's going on, but that's serious at that point. That's... I've heard of that. It happens. Oh, sure. sure. All right. Other additions? Yes, ma'am. Miss Vicki. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> He's 
start to, and he's starting to get uh, aggravated because he can't communicate. Starting to frustrate him. Yeah. So just remember him and his mom and dad. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, and Sherry Smith, they took her back to the hospital yesterday. Really? Okay. All right. We'll pray that things go well there. Uh, I talked to Alan the other day, and, and he said Josh and Anna are doing well. Sounds like things are kind of somewhat back to normal for at least them. I know that a lot of people in their area are probably still struggling. And better than they were a week ago at this time when the elevators were out for three days and they were having to get there on the 32nd floor. Oh, no. You know, that's when you... Uh, There are so many things running through my mind right now. Uh, moving is the number one on the list. <laughs> I bet their view, their view is amazing. Is. I bet they lamented every step, though, on the way up back. And I would have, too. Of course, you know what I'd have done? I'd have had a tent in the lobby. Uh, but that, 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 I don't think I'd have made 32 flights of stairs unless uh, Sherry was carrying me. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. Bless their hearts. You know, you don't think about that when you're uh, when you live in, a, in that type of situation. Sure, yeah. Look, I'd be upset if the two-story elevator was broken, much less the 32-story elevator. Uh, goodness. Wow. Man. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be shook the rest of the night thinking about climbing 32 flights of stairs just to go to home because I know how many things I forget when I walk from the garage to the car that's in the garage and how many times I have to walk back and forth. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. The first time you forget it'd be the last time you needed it. So, uh, or at least that would be for me. I'm glad that's going better and that, that, that they're doing well. Oh, well, now I'd be riding those dogs up the stairs now. That's a... <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that'd have been me too. I, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? I'd be asking it halfway up the steps. I wouldn't even get to the landing. But, uh, yeah. Oh, look. Do they have oxygen stations at each floor? Because they need them. That's a uh, man. Brother Rich, I have a praise. Yes, ma'am. I went to my cancer. I mean, I went and got my stitches. I, uh, and I went to We are thankful for that. I'm just thankful to get out of it. <laughs> well, I tell you, uh, we, we pick at Miss Shirley in a good way because all she ever brings back from her doctors is good reports. And so mm -hmm. we tell her all the time that's all we'll accept. So I'm glad you got another one. I'm very glad you got another one. Uh, well, I'm uh, always thankful for that when the two of y'all get in the car and go off and do your adventures. So, uh, What other additions do we have? All right. All right. Well, I've been so, I, I've so enjoyed the last few weeks uh, just hearing the hearts of those who've prayed out loud for us. So I'd encourage you to do that. Uh, and I, I'd, I'd let you know, too, that this is a, a safe place. If you're not the type that likes to pray out loud, give it a shot. Uh, because, again, you never know who you might minister to simply in just the way you pray. And if you don't think you're going to say the right words, uh, there's no such thing as the right words. So don't worry about that at all. Uh, but we're going to ask if you would to, uh, if you want to, if you want to gather up some, with some folks here in the sanctuary, if you're here with us in person, um, if you you can go ahead and do that. And then, as as God lays someone on your heart or someone's on your heart, uh, if you'd voice a prayer uh, out loud for those folks, and uh, and and we'll pray right along with you. Uh, those of you that are watching home, if you take time and pray with us right now as well, let's go to the Lord in prayer.
came up to you, Lord, you know their problems, you know their family. Lord, we pray that you continue to be with them and give them strength as they go through this time of need. Lord, I'll a special prayer for Lisa, my great granddaughter, great great granddaughter, uh, along with Brooklyn, my granddaughter, and her mother. Uh, Lord, we pray for them. You know the troubles that they're having and we know that, that when we do talk to you that you hear us and you answer them in prayer. Don't just be with us as we go through tonight and open our hearts and we'll hear what message you have prepared for us. And do Brother Lynch, Brother Rich as he delivers that message to us. But we just pray that you'll say something to each one of us tonight that will bring us closer to you. But we just ask you to you to prove your favor. Lord God, in each person's life, including our own, that we pray for tonight and always, we ask your will. Lord God, we thank you that your will is good. Father, your will is right, and your will brings glory to you above all. Father, even when your will is a miraculous cure or a, a supernatural answer, uh, that, that, that is something that we is more than we could have dreamed of in a way that we see as positive, Lord, we celebrate you. But Father, even when your will seems to not be what we think should happen, especially when your will is not maybe the way we would draw it up. We praise you for working your will in, in our lives and the lives of those we care about. Lord God, we know that your will is, is again, right. Father, it is what we, what we desire above all, because if it's something we're praying for that's simply our will, uh, no good will come of that, even if we think it will. So, Lord God, work your will and help us to seek your will in our lives and the lives of all those that you put on our hearts to pray for. Father, we pray that in your will you would bring the comfort that only you can, the strength that only you can, the teaching and the guidance that only you can through your Holy Spirit working in each of our lives. Father, speak to us now here in these next few moments. We thank you for your word. Use it now to build us up, to make us stronger in, in you and in the faith you've given us to place in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as we said, it's, uh, it's Thanksgiving month, I guess is how we'd say that. Uh, and we will begin our, our November, our Thanksgiving sermon series. And, uh, you know, the, the whole sermon series is going to be built around the idea that sometimes we don't know that we should be thankful for some things, right? Uh, sometimes the things that we think we should be thankful for the absence of are actually the things we should be thankful for when they're present in our lives. Uh, you know, there, it'll cover a lot of different ground from temptation to struggle to, uh, to uh, so many things that 
none of us say, hey, I hope today I have this in my life. But we'll look at scripturally how the presence of those things leads us to the things that only God can do. The comfort, the strength, the, the, uh, the, the, the conviction, and the growth that only he can bring. And so uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's a different Thanksgiving sermon series than what we've done in the past. Uh, but I think sometimes God calls us to do things, uh, you know, just from a different angle. Because his, his word speaks to us from every angle if we'll but seek it. And uh, we're looking forward to how God will use that. So in, in the thought of, of thanksgiving and, and being grateful for what God does and how he works in our life, uh, we looked at just the first few verses this evening of Psalm 106. Uh, and obviously the Psalms are chock full of, of words of thankfulness, uh, some in song, some in poem, uh, some in verse that, that, that are just beautifully put as the Spirit uh, led the ones who wrote them uh, to, to put them uh, you know, into words. And, and so uh, certainly we find a lot of meat when it comes to the idea and the understanding of gratitude in the Psalms. And so in Psalm 106, uh, beginning with verse 1, we read this. It says, Praise the Lord and give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise? Blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation and join your inheritance in giving praise. Just five short verses this evening, but uh, but starting off with the understanding and the and the mandate scripturally that we must be thankful for what God has done, uh, and that we must recognize that it's Him working. Now, does that mean that every time God's working, we're going to be able to pick it out, uh, you know, immediately and and decipher and discern that that's exactly what's going on? Well, no. There's going to be plenty of times in our life and in our life of faith in Christ in eternal life that we don't see what all God's doing. There's going to be some times where we see things happening, and, and, and like in this sermon series that we'll go into, Lord will, in these next few weeks. We don't think it's great things that are happening, but yet God is still working and still giving us reason to be thankful. Uh, in verse 1, what, uh, what the psalmist says here is praise the Lord, first of all. Well, a lot of the psalms start off this way, don't they? Uh, praise the Lord is one of the most common uh, you know, common phrases in the Psalms and, and throughout Scripture. But praise the Lord. Boy, those are three words that we say a lot, uh, and sometimes we say them without the weight that they deserve. Uh, praise the Lord. It, that, that's the whole idea here behind this Psalm. Everything else that's said is a descriptor of how the Lord is to be praised or for what we might be praising Him for or for what we need to praise Him for. But praise the Lord. What does it mean to praise the Lord? Does it just mean, is it just some churchy saying that we say all the time? And so, you know, so we don't try to take credit for something for ourselves or for some other person? Well, no, it's so much more than that. In fact, it's, it's literally praise the Lord. Praising the Lord is literally what we're saved to do. I mean, that's, that's the whole point of God redeeming us. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about sharing the gospel, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. But that's the avenue through which we take the blessing of salvation. And praise the Lord is to share the gospel so that other people may be saved and join in the praising of God with us as we join with the people who were saved before we were. Uh, and, and so the praising, you know, praising the Lord is the act that he saves us and enables us in salvation, in justification and forgiveness uh, to be able to do. We can't praise the Lord truthfully and effectively if we're not saved. Uh, we can give praise to the Lord, but until we put our heart in him through faith in Christ, we will not be able to praise him to the uttermost as we read in Scripture. Because we will not be 
intimately related, related to him in faith and in the gift of salvation. But once we are saved, that's what we are to do, is to praise the Lord. Now, those three words will preach a lot, you know, and I could go on for a long time. I won't do that to you tonight. Uh, but suffice to say that those first three words of verse 1 set the stage for everything else that's going to be said. And praising the Lord is something we need to continue to learn how to do and learn to be obedient in and grow in in our faith. He says, praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord. It doesn't say give thanks to the Lord when things seem to be going your way. It also doesn't say give thanks to the Lord when you're down in the dumps and need him to help you out. It just simply says give thanks to the Lord. Why? Well, the next phrase tells us why. For he is good. It is right to applaud when you go to a, a show or a concert. That's good, right? I mean, it's, 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 it's that we understand that. Someone does a good job, what do we do? We clap, we might stand up, we might hoot and holler, we might jump up and do a flip, whatever you do, right? Uh, when, you're, when your ball team does well, you, you cheer for them, and, and, and that's right, that's good to do that. Um, those things aren't even close to being good compared to who the Lord is. And so we are, you know, just like that applause is a sign of thankfulness for the entertainment or the, you know, whatever input into our lives we get from these shows, concerts, sporting events, sporting teams, people in our lives uh, doing, the, you know, these things that we appreciate. God himself is good and he therefore is, his, is worthy of us being thankful to and thankful for. Because not only is he good in and of himself, he's the only, uh, the only being who is good in and of himself on his own apart from anyone else. Any of us, if there's any goodness in us, it only comes from him, not from us. And we can say that because uh, on our own, we're nothing. We can accomplish nothing. But in Christ, being brought into the family, the body of Christ, the family of God, uh, being co-heirs with Christ, he calls us good because of what he has put into us, not because of what we brought to the table or what we bring to the table. Uh, and so we recognize that and then gratitude, gratefulness is a, an expression of recognizing that God is good. Well, how does he show us that he's good? Well, his love endures forever. He doesn't love us for a time and then say, oh, well, you're kind of getting on my nerves and get rid of us or, or, or pass us by the wayside or hand us off to somebody else to be dealt with. He doesn't do that. His love endures forever. It's because love isn't just something that God does. Love is something that God is. He, God is love. We read that in 1 John, don't we? Uh, God is love and therefore he endures forever and so his love endures forever. More than that, the acts of his love endure forever. The things that God does in his love, the things that he has done, is doing, and will do in his love, those are the things that have eternal significance and eternal consequence in a good way. Those acts of God's love, every single one of them, and that's all of God's acts, right? Because even his wrath is built and, and based in love. Those things endure forever. His love endures forever. So the psalmist starts off in verse 1 and says, we should give God the glory in everything that he deserves. We should be thankful for him uh, because he's good and his love endures forever. And then he starts to ask this rhetorical question. He says, who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise? Um, and and the, the implication here is nobody. <laughs> Nobody can know all of the goodness of God, not this side of eternity, not this side of heaven. We can know some of the goodness of God. We can even know maybe a lot for us of the goodness of God. But compared to his fullness of goodness, we can only know a fraction. Why? Well, because we can't handle it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's greater still than even the best of us could comprehend. And that's how good God is. He, and that's that's the definition of perfect. It's 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 absolute 100 percent good. Everything we know outside of God might have some good moments or some good things kind of that come from them or from it. Uh, whether it be, you know, a person uh, acting, you know, on the will of God and sharing love. That's good because it comes from God. Uh, but but we also compare that to when people don't do that. 
with God, there's no comparison. He is good and he's good all the time. He, he doesn't go back and forth. There's not been a time where he wasn't good. Uh, and so when, when the psalmist says here, who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord and fully de- or fully declare his praise, it's, it's stressing to us that no, we can't know it all. And yet still, verse 1 is still appropriate. Even in just knowing a fraction of it, we're to give praise. We're to give thanks. We're to see his goodness. We don't have to know all of it to know that he is far beyond, far above anything we could ever do for ourselves, even if we all work perfectly together, which we don't. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of God? Who can comprehend all of it? No one can, because he's that good. He is alone. In, in, in uh, you know, there's, you know, right now they're they're letting out all the college football bowl. I mean, uh, uh, you know, playoff rankings and all that stuff, and they talk about you know, tier one of teams and tier two of teams and who's, you know, in contention on stuff. No one's on God's tier. No one's on his level. He has no rivals. He has no comparison. He's that good. And so therefore no one can fully understand it. And then he tells us in verse three, he says, blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. Um, Now that narrows the list down pretty quick, right? (laughs) Because who do you know that always does what is right? Not very many. Uh, Now, there's a couple different ways you can interpret this. You could interpret this as as somewhat of an answer to, uh, you know, who can can proclaim all the goodness of God? Uh, Well, the ones who do things right all the time can. So it could be a reinforcement of the idea and the understanding here that that nobody can do this on their own. Nobody can know the goodness of God fully. uh, and, And we don't even have a chance to know, you know, even a good fraction of the fullness of God until we put our faith in him. So that's one way you could look at it, that it's, it's an expansion on the idea that God is that good that we can't even know it all about how good he is. Uh, but also there's an interpretation here that you could look at uh, that say, okay, we can't know it all, so this might be more of a prescriptive way of living, that we do everything that we can do as, as he allows and empowers us to do it rightly and to act justly. Uh, I think either interpretation, or maybe better yet, both interpretations get us to where God wants us to be in this. To know that he is not only good, but he's the source of goodness. He is goodness pure, you know, purely and through and through. And, and so we need to do what he says if we're going to participate in his goodness. Verse 4, he now says, speaking to God. And of course, in verses 1 through 3, he's also speaking to God, but more in a, in a ceremonial way, right? So, um, you know, uh, there's really not a good comparison in all, our culture for this, but maybe to the extent of where, um, you know, when, when a judge comes into the courtroom, they're introduced and everybody rises and there's someone who speaks, you know, it says the honorable so-and-so preside, you know, all, all of those things. That kind of that's that ceremonial introduction, and that's kind of what's going on here in the first three verses. Is 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 he's saying this about God, but also to God? So it's it's a way of lifting him up as he you know seems to be describing him to someone else, but he's he's talking about how great God is. There's uh, th- that's I think what's going on here, uh, and then he more, speaks more directly to God about himself. He says, "Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people." Come to my aid when you save them. Well, a couple things that are going on in verse 4 here is, is uh, this is a person who is looking forward to the favor of God. Um, so maybe they feel that they're in the favor of God already and that they are hoping to continue to be in the favor of God. That's one way to look at it. Maybe it's someone who doesn't feel like they're in the favor of God, uh, but who is, is not trying to earn their way in, but is looking forward to the time when he will do these things. Also remember that the audience to whom this was first written would have been looking forward to what God was going to do that he prophesied uh, or that he told through the prophecy of prophets for years and years and years before. Uh, And that would be to send his Messiah, to send the chosen one, the Savior. Um, And of course, we know that that person is and was to be Jesus. Um, and so, so we get this understanding of the Jewish idea of deliverance here, this future deliverance that they're waiting on. Um, and, and here in the Psalm, in, in Psalm 106, it says, remember me when you show. In other words, the idea of remembering me in scripture is, is let me be 
caught up with you. Let me be um, included in those that you, you know, that you, uh, that you show your favor to. Let me be part of those who experience your salvation is what he's saying here. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them. So in this, he said, praise the Lord. He is good. We should be thankful for that. And he is saying he indeed himself is thankful for that. He's, he's talked about how good God is so much that we can't know it. He's also said that we should act according to what God says to do things rightly and justly. And then he said, he's saying, Lord, in all of this, let me do, let me be who you want me to be so that I will be one of these that you've said will, fa- will find salvation. In, in New Testament understanding, we have a little bit um, of an advantage, I think. Uh, because we can know based on what the Lord has called us to do and how we've responded to that calling about what we've done as far as Jesus is concerned. If we put our faith and trust in him, we don't have to just hope one day that he'll save us and that we'll be counted in. We can know that we've been counted in the, in the number of the saved. Uh, we can know that we are being delivered and will be delivered uh, from judgment when it comes time for the whole earth to be judged. Uh, we, we can know that. We, the 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 people in the time of the Psalms being written um, didn't have that assurance because Jesus had not come. They were that they had to take it totally on faith, and we see that described uh, in Abram's life as well as in Moses's life and his others, especially in the Book of Hebrews, where we look back on some of the faith hall of fame, if you will, there in uh, in some of the latter chapters. He continues to say, though, after verse 4, he says, So that, come to my aid when you save your people, remember me in that number, uh, so that uh, I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation and join your inheritance in giving praise. Now, until those last three words in the English translation, until those last words, it might sound like, hey, God, I want to be with you so I get all the good stuff right? But what's he actually asking for? So that I can perfectly praise you forever. So that I can join in all this good blessing that you're promising God that this psalmist is asking for. And I think that each of us needs to ask for as well, not for our good, you know, not for, for our advancement or for our gain, but for the glory of God and his praise. And it harkens back to Praise the Lord at the beginning. So everything that he's asking here is not, hey, do great for me, make me happy, you know, make me strong, make me good, make me holy. It's draw me in so I can truly and fully participate in praising you the way you deserve to be praised, God. Amen. And I think that as, as we think about being thankful, I think that as we think about being grateful in our lives, um, I think that's a great place for us to sit for a little while. I think that's a great place for us to meditate on uh, because so often, and we talked about it Sunday night for a lot of you that were in here, so often we get wrapped up in our own situation and everything we pray for affects us. I heard somebody challenge a group of students at the time, but I think it's challenging to people of all ages, especially people of faith, and, and they ask the question this, is if, if God, you know, God answered everything you prayed for this week, would it change anybody's life but your own? Right, and that's a, that's a big question. I mean, that's a, that's something that's important to us. Hopefully, if you know, for all the things that we've prayed for, uh, if He answered all those prayers with a resounding yes and brought in miracles and did all the things that only He can do, that the whole world's lives would be, would be changed. Right, but what that's encouraging us to do is is to make sure that we're showing gratitude to to the Lord and praying for His will, praying for His glory, praying for Him, not just for us and that we are extremely and and exceedingly more and more thankful that he would include us in that through faith in Christ. Uh, As as that becomes a characteristic and becomes characteristic in itself of our lives, uh, I think that can be a pretty good indication that we're growing in our faith and that we're serving God uh, and praising him with the life that he's given us in a way that glorifies him. Um, maybe not perfectly for us just yet because we still battle sin and flesh, but certainly in a direction that is growing. Um, and so that's my prayer for us and my prayer for myself as well as our church and for all those who call on the name of the Lord and are saved is that we would be so thankful that all we really want to do is praise God 
And everything else that we do fits into that more and more with each passing moment, each choice, each reaction, each day, um, and not have it be the other way. That, 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 well, we used to want to praise God a lot more than we do now, but that we would grow in that gratitude and that desire to praise God and be blessed by him, not for our own gain, but for his glory. Let's wrap up by going to the Lord in prayer together. Lord God, we do, from the bottoms of our hearts and through and through our hearts, praise you tonight. Father, we, without you, would have no place and nothing to bring to praise you. But, Lord, in you, uh, as we've trusted in Jesus, so many of us, and have been saved and have been indwelt by your Holy Spirit according to your word and are living eternal life even now as we would also look forward to eternal life with you uh, after you've made all things right. Lord God, we, we want to praise you tonight. And whatever you've given us to praise you, we want to turn right back around and do that very thing. Lord God, be exalted, be lifted up, be praised in our lives and in how we live them. Lord, not for our own good, for our own gain, but Lord, for your glory. And in that, Father, help us to be a light. Lord, as the light of, of, of the world that you've put in us, in Christ, let it shine out in our lives that others might come to know you and serve you and praise you that same way. Lord God, tonight I thank you for the men and women that are here and I pray that you would bless each and every one of us. Lord, not with uh, just the things we want, but, Father, the things that you want us to do, have, be, experience, long for, and celebrate. Father God, in the things that we would think to praise you for, let us praise you. In the things that we would think we, we, will, we want to have different, let us praise you in those things as well. Father, go with us, take us, and let us, better yet, go with you into this world, Father, from this place, that we might serve you and praise you by serving and loving others as Jesus has loved us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.